We're live at Hadoop Summit. Uh, this is theCUBE. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, Hadoop Summit is in Silicon Valley, live from San Jose Convention Center. This is day two of extended exclusive coverage, uh, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org. Charles Zedleski is here. He's the Vice President of Product Marketing at Cloudera, CUBE alum. Charles, welcome back. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So, you know, we're entering this new phase of, uh, of Hadoop. You guys were there from, you know, from ground zero. Mm -hmm. And uh, where are we at? How would you describe it? Wow, I mean, we, you know, I think I've been talking to folks in theCUBE for three years now, maybe more. So it's yeah. kind of, it's exciting to think that we've gotten to uh, talk about a whole industry shape in front of our eyes, you know? So it's a, it's a market category. Uh, it's a new kind of platform. Um, it's an incredible uh, set of uh, stories that we read about in the news all the time now about how this technology is changing business and organizations. Uh, so it's a pretty exciting time. And of course, uh, you know, Hadoop Summit, uh, a, lot of a lot of technical tracks, a lot of discussion about the evolution of the technology, some of the new advances. Um, and uh, we're starting to see um, people's, people's conceptualization of what this platform is. I think the people's minds are changing right now uh, about, just, about just what it's going to do and how far it's going to go. Um, people are starting to understand what the, the long-term potential is, and it's and it's uh, uh, it's it's much much more significant than than, than what people might have. Originally people believe, thought. as Avi Meta just said. People <laughs> believe, yes, <laughs> yeah. Charles, absolutely. I mean, one of the things that you know, we're proud of is working with Cloud Air, you guys, and we, you know, I mentioned this uh, on on the, on a blog post and this on, on Facebook to my followers and friends is yeah. that you guys have built the industry. Cloud Air was the first mm -hmm. company. Um, to commercialize, I see Yahoo had the big part of it, Doug was there now, mm -hmm. Cloudera, you guys were the first, you guys were the pioneers, uh -huh. you had no competition when you started, yeah. um, and you guys really built a great team and a great company, Thank you. and you pioneered a lot of that stuff early on, and continue uh -huh. to be the leader, and, and so, uh, since then, yeah. Competition has entered the fray. Sure. The word enterprise grade is, is now hitting this conference. Yeah. And the talk of business solutions, business values kick, kicked into right. high gear, right? Sure. So, so one of the things that's come up yesterday was, was we noted was, um, what is the value? People are, you know, there's a, there's a, a the, as this becomes enterprise grade, the POCs are increasing their in scope, production deployments, and now it's the business value conversation. This is where the big investment's coming in. Yeah. So I want to ask you, um, um, one, that conversation you guys have had, and I've seen, yeah. you know, I know you can't talk about some of the names you have for customers, some you can, you can't. Sure. Um, but I know for a fact you guys have some pretty big customers and big deployments. Yeah. Uh -huh. You've been there early with these big POCs. Right. And you do a lot of hands-on activities, so you're in there, probably the best in terms of that. Mm -hmm. What is the business value conversation that's hitting the mainstream today? Because you know you had the early adopters, yeah. they've been digging in, and certainly with you guys. What is that business value today? One thing I want to I want to touch on really briefly before we get to business value, and you mentioned enterprise grade. Uh, you know, I think in the three years that we've been talking, Hadoop is ready for the enterprise. Has been uh, a spiel for at least three years running. Uh, oh, now it's you know with this next thing. B before it was an enterprise, and now it's enterprise. Um, but but the reality is that, that very large uh, and very traditional organizations have been running this in production for years now. Uh, so it really is a question of what use case and in what industry and what circumstances, and really the reality is everybody's definition of what's ready for them uh, is different. And every year, the percentage of the enterprise customer base uh, that says, ah yes, now I can trust this business process or uh, this workload to the platform uh, grows. Um, we have uh, uh, telecommunications customers that have 20 petabytes under management in production today. Um, in most enterprises that, uh, that use Cloudera, um, we are already the single largest repository of data they have uh, in their organization. So larger than any storage array, uh, larger than any database. Um, so we're pretty far down the path of, um, of, of enterprise. Well, let, let's, let's stay on this for a second, and then we'll talk about yeah. business, because I think this is really, really important, because you know, we, we've noted, certainly in theCUBE, about the FUD in the marketplace, right? right. a lot of FUD, certainly against Cloudera, you're the leader, right? So everyone's going to shoot arrows at Cloudera because you yeah. guys are leading the pack. But, you know, enterprise grade might not mean the same for a big established legacy vendor, because they don't want their customers to know it's in production. They might say, hey, oh, they're only doing POCs with Hadoop. And what you're saying is, no, there are companies like Facebook and big web companies that have been yeah, doing it. Yeah, and I think, that's, I think that's absolutely part of the dynamic. So if you talk, you said before, like Cloudera sort of had the feel to itself. Today, today we track eight companies, including ourselves, that, that, that claim to be um, Hadoop vendors. A very high fraction of those are um, kind of incumbent uh, systems and technology vendors, incumbent data management vendors, um, and and it's a, it's it's to be it's a little distant. You know, it, 
they're, there's a little, they're trying to kind of have it both ways, right? Because on the one hand, they want to say, oh yeah, we've got that too, let me check the box, right? And, and sort of co-opt co the, the amount of enthusiasm there is for this movement. At the same time, sort of damn it with faint praise and say, well, someday it'll be ready for the enterprise, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's trying to have it both ways. And I think that's why uh, Cloudera has continued to thrive. That's why independent companies have continued to thrive in this Hadoop market is because um, we, we, know, we know that it's actually delivering value in the enterprise today. And we, we, have, we, have the mo we have sort of the most ambitious vision for the potential of the technology. Whereas the other folks are sort of saying, well, I want to check the box, but you know, don't forget about well, this large catalog. Let's just, of, let's just be of, candid. If I'm, a co if I'm a company and my clients um, and I don't have a Hadoop solution, I am not going to tell my clients, oh yeah, yeah, uh, we don't have Hadoop. Of course, it's, of course it's only POCs, of course I'm in a deep position in that. So, yeah, well, that's if I sell boxes and now all of a sudden there's a larger repository that's, that's a natural Hadoop next yeah. to mine, I'm going to freak out a little bit. Well, that, well that's, exactly. a natural rea that's a natural reaction, but I, gotta, I, gotta, yeah. I want to ask you, let's define enterprise grade, because you sure. mentioned that. that. There are some saying, you know, obviously depending on how you look at the elephant in the room, there's different versions of it. So just break down from your perspective, enterprise grade level, because sure. you said you're doing a ton of enterprise yeah. grade, let's break so, that down. So, let's, so I think the, 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 the properties and characteristics that people care about, so um, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you probably five. Um, one, one of them is availability, right? And that was, so people uh, just need to have their system run in a highly available uh, mode at all times. Um, another, another big one is recoverability. Recoverability could mean um, recovering from user mistakes. Um, application corruption or recovery could mean like recovering from a data center outage. So this is some combination of disaster recovery is kind of part of recoverability, uh, but so is recovering from user error. Um, uh, a, uh, a third one is around security. So people care a lot about all the different um, forms of information security. Uh, a fourth one is around uh, uh, compliance. So I have all kinds of corporate policies and I need to make sure that this system fits inside the framework of my corporate policies. And I think the fifth one, which is I would argue actually the most important, even though it's not like a typical enterprise buzzword, is usability. The biggest, the biggest hallmark of an enterprise customer that's different from the web customers that Hadoop grew up with is that they don't have a lot of MapReduce developers on staff. They don't have a lot, you know, if you, if you look at uh, the Googles and the Facebooks and the Yahoos of the world, um, they all can have Hadoop clusters that'll have maybe 500 users, uh, 1,000 users. There is no equivalent staff working at a large bank or uh, a, a, a large telecommunications firm or retailer. They have people that know SQL, they have people that know BI tools, they maybe have some people that know SAS procs or, or R, R functions. Um, and so the, the biggest issue really I think for most customers is how do I bring that, all those users over to uh, this platform that has so many other advantages. Uh, Charles, you're the vice president of products at Cloudera, which yeah. means puts you in charge of the product portfolio, and you have a lot of experience in the tech business. So, uh -huh. so um, let's talk about the areas of improvement. Where do you see the areas yeah. that need to be improved, tweaked up? Because obviously the platform, there yeah. are developers waiting in the wings to start programming on top of Hadoop, totally. and certainly the developer community needs to be, you know, yep. more bigger and larger. So, there, and people sure. are waiting. What, what's to well, do? So, I, in my in my opinion. Um, I think the availability story is actually in, in pretty good shape, at least, at least in the case of Cloudera. You can run uh, every component of the stack in a highly available model. Um, we can tweak here and there, but I don't really think that that's a, a source of big gaps. We have some improvements coming in terms of recoverability. Uh, we already have a DR capability today, uh, but we're going to move that over to a snapshot-based model you know the details, but that's that's going to be a nice improvement. But recoverability, uh, we've already satisfied to some degree. It's going to get better in the future. And that's a that's a cost play right there, right? It's largely, uh, right? You're going it, to significantly make it more efficient. To you can you can make yeah. absolutely you can make it more efficient to yeah. to to to, uh, to cover the recoverability when you talk about story. Snapshots, okay. Um, the the uh, big ones is you're going to see some advances in the security side. So a lot of people have demand for database style security. You know, per column, per view, per whatever, uh, and that's and that makes sense. If you want to have 100 business users access data in Hadoop, almost by definition, they should not get rights to all the data sets. But you today you can only secure in very chunky, coarse grain ways that make it very inconvenient for business analysts and business users to get at the data. So more fine grain. Security fine grain security levels. is a big one. Uh, you're going to hear some news about that in the coming uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, and then the big one which drove our investment in Impala, it's driven our investment in search, and it's driven our uh, collaboration with companies like uh, SaaS and Revolution Analytics, is usability. Um, how do we provide a BI experience which is comparable to what people are used to on uh, traditional databases? How do we provide a machine learning or statistics experience which is comparable or superior to what they're used to if they were running SaaS Grid or, or you know, Enterprise Miner? 
Um, how do we provide something that even, not even like a business analyst can use, but like a doctor, or a claims adjuster, uh, something you can do with like free text search. So uh, the biggest investment we've made by far has been usability, adding new frameworks outside of MapReduce that allow us to attract new families of applications and new families of users to the same repository of data. I think that's going to be the, the big story uh, of Hadoop for the next several years. Charles, talk about the search thing, because you know, I mean, I was kind of commenting, I wasn't, I wasn't trivializing the announcement, but it didn't seem like a hard technical problem, maybe because I'm not understanding how Solar was rolled out, but um, obviously search is a core asset for uh -huh. people's usability. Um, did I get that wrong? I mean, obviously I'm oversimplifying, but just, we'll just tease out what, yeah, went, absolutely. On, what went on in no, search, I think, I think your it. points. I think your point's uh, uh, valid to some extent. So unlike Impala, uh, which is a query engine, we basically had to build from the ground up, because we needed to take a new kind of approach to make uh, parallel MPP SQL work on the Hadoop platform. There was no, there was no open source project that we could adopt. That's a hard problem. It was a hard problem to solve, and there was it was it was not like there was an existing open source project where we could just start adopting it and contributing to it. Uh, we had to uh, we ha we had to just uh, uh, go from the ground up. Um, but this wasn't necessary in search. If you look at what's possible, uh, what you could do with Solar, it, it already had the ability to scale out to large volumes of load and large volumes of data. Um, it already had resiliency, fault tolerance. Yep. It already had a lot of the things you needed to be part of the Hadoop family. What we had to do though is we had to take what was historically a freestanding system. Most people today, if they use Solar Cloud, they have their own cluster just for Solar Cloud. Um, and it has its own management model, it has its own infrastructure, it has its own data sets, and we needed to take what was a freestanding system and turn it into a feature of the larger Hadoop so platform. So it was an integration challenge. Yeah, so for example, the way you'll be able to use um, Solar today uh, in conjunction with CDH is um, you can store your index inside of HDFS. So that means if you've got a DR process that you're using for, uh, for, for HDFS, Solar comes along for the ride. So one, one man, all those enterprise um, traits that we had invested in the core platform, Solar gets to inherit a lot of that um, where previously you had to figure all that stuff out for yourself as a customer. Also, um, the big thing we invested in is um, how to let Solar work off the same data um, as all the other frameworks in Hadoop. So what you want to be able to do is um, you've got search users and you've got SQL users and you've got MapReduce developers. Um, they all want to work in different ways, but we want them working in the same data. Otherwise, you just create little islands of data inside one cluster, so you're sharing hardware, yeah. but, but no one is actually collaborating. You're not able to build an end-to-end -end application. So we have Solar able to kind of index and read from and be, be able to search all the stuff you have in HDFS, and then even take those search results, and later on you'll be able to so create So it's a great endorsement too to Solar and, and, and that project. I mean, that you guys essentially cobbled it in and integrated it and added some capabilities. And, right? we also, and we also had to be a bigger part of the open source community. So we had uh, Mark Miller, who was a key uh, Solar committer and I believe also a PMC member, joined Cloudera. Solar actually was an offshoot from Lucene, which was founded by Doug Cutting. Yep. So um, like everything else, if we are going to incorporate it into our platform, um, then we're going to be uh, we're going to be a contributor and, 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 and a leader in that particular open source community. Yeah, Charles. Yeah, can you give us the update on uh, Impala as we uh, wind down this? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, so Impala went GA uh, a little while back. We've seen uh, excellent adoption. If you look at the Impala user community, if you look at our customer base, uh, the attach rate is extraordinarily high. If we just look at users of CDH uh, 4.1 or higher, which is when, when uh, Impala uh, came out, uh, of anyone who downloads CDH right now, um, about 85% of the time they're also using Impala. The BI support has expanded. Um, uh, the performance has improved. We added columnar support, so um, it's getting faster and faster with every successive release. And we're going to do uh, a number of releases like every month or two for Impala where we continue to add either more SQL functionality or more things that um, uh, lower the latency and allow people to do interactive BI uh, you know, at gigabyte scale, terabyte scale, dozens of terabyte scale. You know, at some point we'll get to petabyte scale. Yeah, okay, and so things like user-defined query, we've talked about this before, that's here those, now with, with Yeah, search. exactly, so there's, 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 th there's those features, but the, the biggest test is how do we let more people uh, get that kind of half a second to three second response time on a bigger and bigger set of data. And I think I heard Amr say yesterday that you've open sourced Impala, is that? Impala's that, that always correct? been open sourced, yeah, so okay. it's so, uh, under so an Apache license. So it's an Apache open source project, yeah. and, uh, and, and presumably you guys are the biggest contributors to that, but, yeah. but so we talk about we, that a little bit. Yeah, so um, we manage the project, meaning uh, the release dates and uh, the schedule uh, is managed by Clutter employees, but the software is all under an Apache license. So you can take it, you can use it at any scope and scale that you want, you can change it. If you want to get in the Impala business tomorrow, you're welcome to take it, go scrub the name it's off up on of GitHub it. And I can yeah, go call it the, uh, the Cube Impala Part 2 The Revenge, 
knock yourself out. So, um, very, very flexible. Very, I love that, Charles. <laughs> yeah. We'll call it Silicon Angle's distribution of Impala. You, you have to We've been announcing it every Hadoop world. That's We've been right. introducing <laughs> a new technology, except now we're going to introduce software-defined Hadoop. It's enterprise ready. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, it's already <laughs> software-defined. Um, yeah. so, my, my final question, because we got a break here, yeah. is um, we're going to, and maybe we can do the business value conversation another time. Um, the open source communities, yes. right? You've been involved, obviously, with Cloud Air and, and in your previous life. Yeah. You've seen the open source movie before, and it's been evolving, it's maturing in very rapid pace. We've been commenting, and, and we've been ratified on theCUBE in multiple events this past summer tour, that the new standards bodies are the open source communities, and the old stack of the OSI model, the, you had bodies that would, uh, governing bodies that would do that, yes. not anymore. So the community is really, really important. So yeah. I want you to share your perspective on that. The, the, the ratification of these multiple omni, omni uh, channel stacks or yeah. solutions, you got Amazon, everyone else out there doing things. And the role of the community mm -hmm. in ratifying standards, conduct, good conduct, citizenship, uh, contribution, what are you seeing as a best practice and, and or things that the community needs to continue to do yeah. to be successful because now you have in a way, a folksonomy or a grouponomy around yeah. the, the, the managing of projects, which are being voted with code. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think your observation is valid. So I used to work for BEA Systems, and uh, that was kind of part of this generation of software where st the standards were formed by a standards body. And maybe it was the Java community process, which Sun largely directed, or uh, maybe it was like WC3. And what we found with all of those approaches to standardization is that uh, they tended to get corrupted pretty quickly, right? Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, you'd basically get like the, the top uh, big corporations, the, you know, the, the IBMs of the world, uh, the, the Microsofts of the world, who have money to burn, and they can go stall staff these process, committees. Yeah. They can go staff these committees with people that do nothing but either stall or kind of direct something a certain way. And, they, and the startups that are actually like driving a lot of the new innovation, they just don't have the money to do that, right? So it's like a game of rope a and eventually these things just collapse into their own weight. Um, absolutely right, the way, the way standards work in my mind right now uh, with, with open source is that, um, Part of it is what you said, which is, well, there's an open source community and they add features and then that, bec and if that, um, that becomes a standard. But the biggest thing is that it has to be adopted. It has to be, you know, if there's no adoption of the software that gets created, then it's not a standard. It doesn't matter how many people voted on it, um, it has to have the adoption. So um, there's many different collaborative models out there right now. Um, I'll, I'll use Core Hadoop as an example. Core Hadoop has um, a relatively diverse base of contributors. Uh, and it is widely adopted by uh, lots of customers, and that's what formalizes it as a standard. I'll give you other examples, something like uh, Storm, uh, which is just a GitHub project that Nathan Mars uh, started, yeah. and that's become probably the most popular way to do stream processing. Uh, and again, what's the, what the, and, and he has a totally different method by which they take in patches and incorporate. So there's how the engineers work together, but at the end of the day, there is no substitute for good software. You've got to show up with compelling functionality that people can consume easily. And adoption is the vote. The adoption is the vote. Adoption is what decides what the standard is. Charles, thanks for sharing that. Of course, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon, we're tracking it. We will keep an eye on it. This is what people want to do. This is why we have theCUBE here, and this is what we, we live for. It's really amazing innovation. I love the inflection point. I think we are at that kind of OSI stack model in this new world. Uh, software is the key. You're seeing it even on the hardware guys. Software defined everything. Absolutely. You know, networks, compute, servers, everything is being, being software uh, enabled, mm -hmm. and certainly Hadoop's a big part of it. Charles with Cloudera, the leading company, the first one in building the industry, and now with eight people, you're tracking, we we're tracking a little bit more because you got some other fringe uh, things developing. Thanks for coming inside theCUBE, great to see you. We'll be right back with our next guest here at Hadoop Summit. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's coverage. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.